Hey guys, welcome back to the game room. Today I'm taking a look at SOS Titanic. It's a 1 to 5 player cooperative game by Bruno Cathala and Ludovic Malblanc based on the biggest event of the 20th century. The release of 1997's Titanic the Movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio and other people who are not Leonardo DiCaprio. No, no, don't cut the music, cut the music. We're not getting flagged by YouTube. That's not happening. Uh, so, right up front, this game fails in the theme department as there's not a single love story in this at all. It's all about saving people from a ship. So, I guess we'll take a look at it. I'm going to be a professional reviewer here and give you my honest opinion and show you how it's played. And uh, we'll see what this game has to offer that isn't Leonardo DiCaprio. So let's take a look at it. So here's the setup for SOS Titanic. Uh, as you can see, it's not really a board, but it's actually a book. Uh, the book always starts on number 10 here, uh, and it represents the Titanic as it hit the iceberg. This is essentially right when it hit the iceberg, before it's sinking. Uh, people don't really know what's going on just yet. And it's represented actually using the time uh, when they find out. And then as you go through the uh, book here, you can see the Titanic start to get worse and worse, and flares start going off. And then it starts to sink, and it gets it goes to the point where it actually sinks throughout the game, and you're, it's game over essentially at that point. Uh, what you're trying to do is is play solitaire, as you can see here. There's uh, looks like a solitaire game. It is a solitaire game in the sense that you are playing solitaire. Theoretically, it is for one to five players, but if you've ever played solitaire, you're going to understand this game really quickly. Um, but anyway, the game itself, you can see there's different uh, levels here as far as the uh, portals that are filling up, and as the ship starts sinking, these are eight, each different decks. The you're trying to essentially either save your uh, crew or save your not your crew, excuse me, but save your passengers uh, by moving them to the top. Kind of like how this is a number one uh, ro uh, lifeboat. It's kind of like an ace, and you would move the ace off the board and start stacking guys over there onto the lifeboat. So similar to how in solitary you'd move the ace and stack the two, the three, the four, you know, going like that and try to, that's how you would get cards out of your uh, play area in solitary. That's how you do it in SOS Titanic, except it's with lifeboats instead of aces. Uh, the other way to do that is to move them constantly to the right to try to get them into safer decks until the end of the game and you can get those lifeboats. Uh, now there's a couple things that go into this. It's not just straight up solitaire. As you can see, there's really only two colors here. There's not a lot of uh, different colors. You have purple, and you have yellow. Now the uh, uh, purple is the upper class essentially. Uh, there's a few different uh, types in here. There's going to be different types of metals as well. So on the purple here uh, we have nothing in this icon but on this purple we have a little anchor and depending on the uh, symbol that's at the top you'll get different amounts of points uh, by matching the right symbol with the right symbol. So the more anchors you can get in a lifeboat the better uh, rather than having them mixed in with the others. And the uh, same thing for the yellows, uh, you have anchors there as well. There's also less first class passengers than there are uh, lower class. The yellows lower, the purples first class. Uh, the purples go up to 13 with anchors and not anchors, and the yellows go up to, or the lower class goes to 17 with anchors and not anchors so each each of the if you have an anchor on there it, there's a there's 17 versions of yellow with an anchor 17 versions without an anchor and same thing for the purples essentially and that's really just to affect points it also makes it a little bit easier to score than in solitaire because it, it, it reduces the bad beats that you can get in solitaire when you deal out cards there's always that possibility where you just have the impossible uh, setup where you can't really do much uh, or it just it just kind of stalls out. In this, you you may not stall out as bad because you just have to match yellow with yellow. Not matching the matching the anchors gets you more points, but it's not required, so it can get you out of some scrapes. Uh, now at the beginning of the game, depending on the on the amount of players, you'll be getting uh, different characters. And uh, so I'll just be using one as an example here. This is uh, Reginald Lee, uh, and there's a few different symbols here. Uh, we got four in the top left. That's how many action cards you start with, and action cards essentially. Uh, will allow you to move, uh, do different things with with uh, the passengers on board and things of that nature. Uh, up in the top right, that's how many players you have to be playing with. So you'd have to be playing a solo game with just one person. Uh, down here we have one through six. That's going to be how many passengers you can draw from the deck, which I'll go over here in a moment. And down here is his power, which in his case is actually a negative because he can draw so many cards from the top of the deck. Uh, he doesn't take action cards uh, when he fails at a passenger rescue. So uh, let's go ahead and start off by looking at the action cards he gets. So he gets four of these. 
And there's a few different types of action cards. Uh, we have a few, just a little bit of a selection here. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. But we have a mystery passenger, which counts as whatever yellow one you want it to count as. So it can be like a filler. We have a purple one of the same type. Uh, we have the uh, collapsible boat, which will essentially work as an extra or temporary uh, deck here on the edge of your board. Uh, and weight, which would let you move guys apart. And there's different there's different uh, abilities. There's weight, there's uh, stop, things of that nature. They'll let you do different things. Uh, but the one catch with these action cards is they can be very powerful, but also uh, they don't naturally replenish unless you're doing poorly. Uh, every time this book turns, you'll be getting uh, action cards, but or every time you fail to rescue, uh, you can actually turn the page, but you don't get action cards with my power here because he doesn't get action cards from that, but normally you would. Uh, so that's your hand, so you really want to use these wisely because if you don't, you're going to run out of them very quickly. That's that's one really big catch. So on a player's turn there's two things that they can do. Uh, one of them they must do, the other one that's they can do. So the first thing they can do is move passengers. And this is something you don't have to do but you can move passengers if you want. And essentially moving passengers is the part where you play solitaire. So uh, you would look down here and see if you can move any passengers and, and they move exactly like you'd think in solitaire. Like, we mentioned the lifeboat functioning like the ace. We could move this up to the top and that would be the start of one of our lifeboats. That would start our first rescue. And we flip the next card in line here. Now here is where you look for other matches. So uh, if we had an eight here we could move the seven to the eight and flip more cards like in solitaire again. Uh, we have a nine, a three, a seven, and a seven. We can't really do much with that. So then we'd move on to the compulsory phase, which is either playing an action or you can try to rescue passengers. So in our case, I would not want to really waste any of these cards this early. So let's try to hunt for passengers. And that's where his uh, number comes into play. So this one through six indicates how many guys he can draw from the top of this passenger deck. Uh, so let's say we want to go with the maximum. We'll go six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we'll have to be able to play one of these passengers onto the board somewhere, uh, and we can play. Um, you 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 don't uh, have to. You can't actually play more than one, but you have to play, be able to play at least one, or it can cause you problems. So we actually do have one we can play. Uh, we have the seventeen, uh, which is the highest number that you can get in the uh, lower class. As you can see, this little bar at the top here that indicates that they can be played directly onto an empty deck. It's like kind of starting a, uh, a new column. Uh, if one of those was revealed in these piles, you could do the same thing, moving them over to an empty deck and creating a new column, uh, thus getting you into more safety, essentially. Uh, we didn't really have anything else we could have played, so that's very fortunate. Uh, now, let's say we hadn't gotten this guy. We hadn't gotten the 17, weren't able to play it. Uh, we instead got this 12. So we can't play the 12 out anywhere. Uh, there's no 13s or anything like that. Uh, we can't play the 7 because there's no 8. We can't play the 11. Uh, can't play the 16 because we obviously the 17 is higher and he can't start his own row. No 5 because there's no 6. And no 4. And that is really bad. Uh, so essentially if, if we hadn't gotten that 17 out of those top 6, uh, we immediately have to flip the page. The ship sinks, we've wasted time, and we get farther into the game. So now the ship would do that and start sinking. As you can see by this little porthole losing water, that means it's starting to go down. Now normally when that page turns in that way where you don't get anybody from the passenger deck, your player would be able to draw one of these action cards here. Uh, unfortunately, our guy's big advantage is that he can draw up to six uh, passengers uh, and they negate that by the fact that you can't draw action cards when you flip the page. So that is, uh, that's really rough for us. We, we would have gotten negative. However, obviously we did draw 17 so that wasn't really the situation but I just want to give you an example of what happens. Uh, now, let's say we get farther into the game and again, we do the same thing every turn. You would be able to move passengers and then either play an action card or try to save passengers from the deck here. Uh, let's say we get farther into the game and we lose a deck. So as soon as a deck is lost, 
you'll actually take the passengers from the far the deck that is lost and shuffle them in with the next deck up and then start a new deck essentially with a new top card in the deck so this can be uh, actually pretty terrible it's not usually a good thing to do this mainly because there's more randomness with this sometimes it's okay because you want a new card on top but it's not usually a good thing for the most part uh, mostly because you're getting farther and farther closer to the end there so we got an 11 on top and again this is just to give you an example of how the page changes usually you won't have won't have it looking like this by this point but uh, you'll have more movement and more cards removed from it but that's essentially the gist of SOS Titanic uh, you'll be doing this throughout the game and uh, going through this deck as you get to the end to the point where it actually sinks and hopefully at that point you would have filled up your lifeboats with uh, in sequential order one two three four five up to the 17 for yellow and up to the 13 for purple and you're trying to get all four lifeboats filled up by so the way scoring works would come down to the actual uh, not only the page but also the lifeboats themselves uh, so you would take the number on the page when the game ended so if you actually did somehow rescue all the passengers you would just add the uh, number of that page so one two three up to ten uh, usually I end up sinking and just scoring points uh, so uh, I have the zero here to add so not not really a big deal there uh, and then you'd add the highest number in each of the different survivor groups so let's say on this lifeboat we got all the way up to up to seven and then on another lifeboat we got up to the all the way up to 17 somehow I'm, I'm really putting this <laughs> I'm really I'm really faking it now uh, and then on the purple we got up to three we'll, we'll, we'll counter out the three and a four so pretty much you would just add those top cards of each survivor group that got to the actual lifeboats off the board and that would be your score uh, the anchors come into play with the largest chain so let's say within this uh, one through seven this this survivor group if you had a uh, a few that had an anchors and had anchors in a row, so uh, maybe the four, five, and six had anchors. So that's three in a row. That'll give you three bonus points. You just take the largest chain of anchors. So if that was your largest chain within a survivor group, you get that. Same thing with purple. You do the one for yellow, the highest one in yellow, and the highest one in purple would give you bonus points. Uh, so the scoring's not too difficult. It's just mainly trying to get the biggest number on top of each of these uh, lifeboats. Uh, and that's it. Uh, the in the game rules it says the historical group or the historical crew scored 19 points. So uh, you know you're trying to aim to beat it. You can actually score way more than that if you somehow rescue everybody. I've never done that. So uh, you know that's a possibility. But uh, that is really all there is to SOS Titanic. You're getting to the end of the uh, game by either the ship sinking or saving everybody. Uh, while trying to score the most points through the survivors, pretty much by playing solitaire. The only addition are the action cards and the powers from the characters, which is a cool addition, but uh, the components are all really high quality, satin finished cards. Uh, the booklet itself is really cool. I really like the concept of the booklet, and I like just the thematic touches uh, as far as the backs of the cards looking like boarding passes, uh, things of that nature. The little It, it just looks, it, it looks really cool. Uh, there's something about the look of the game that, I, that really draws me to it. Uh, let me give you my final opinions, and uh, you can decide for yourself if SOS Titanic is up your alley. So guys, that is SOS Titanic. Uh, first things first, I've learned during the review that this was a real event and not just a dramatized movie, so I'm sorry to any relatives of survivors or casualties aboard the actual Titanic. Uh, that is my bad. Uh, but to the game itself, it's solitaire. I mean, that's the best description you can have for SOS Titanic. If you like Solitaire, you'll probably like SOS Titanic because it's themed Solitaire. Uh, the 1 to 5 cooperative moniker on this is kind of a joke. Uh, it's just Solitaire. If you, you can play it with 5 people as much as you can play Solitaire with 5 people. If you like playing Solitaire with 5 people, then you'd enjoy this. I personally would rather just play it by myself and try to save as many passengers as possible. I, I actually like playing cooperative games, but this doesn't feel like a pandemic or a forbidden desert or anything like that. It just feels like solitaire. So it, it's 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 good if you like solitaire variants, which, I like I said, I do. And this is a cool thematic version of that. Uh, some of the themes a little... It's not pasted on, but it's uh, not exactly cool. It's just like the shuffling of the passengers to form the panic deck or whatever the case may be for when you, when you have to turn the page. It's interesting, but... Uh, it's it, it's kind of thrown in there. I'm not. It's not a really thematic way of doing that. But 
Um, the game itself suffers from solitaire syndrome in the sense that you can have a bad draw. Uh, there's not as many suits, but it can still give you some trouble. It's not, I, I would say it's easier than normal solitaire in that regard because there's only uh, orange and yellow, or excuse me, uh, purple and yellow. Uh, the, the extra suits are more for bonus points, but uh, overall it's not one that I could play a lot, uh, many, like tons in a row. It's one I'd probably break out every now and then. Uh, it's not one of my best solitaire games, but it's definitely one that's probably going to stay in my collection just because I like the theme so much. I like the aesthetics of the game. The The book itself is really cool. Uh, the theme is unique. I don't have any other games based on a real-life disaster. Uh, and I like historical stuff like this, so I'm, I'm probably going to keep this one in the collection. Uh, it's, it's definitely not for everyone, but if you're a fan of solitaire games, and if you're a fan of solitaire the game, uh, and you just want some kind of twist on that, I definitely recommend SOS Titanic. If you're looking for a really deep cooperative experience or uh, something just in generally that's not solitaire, uh, I wouldn't really go for it. It's it's probably not worth it or up your alley, but uh, I do enjoy it. So I would overall recommend SOS Titanic if you like this type of game. Uh, and guys, again, sorry about the mix-up with the historical accuracy there, uh, but thanks for sticking with me through that review of SOS Titanic. Uh, if you'd like to see more stuff, you can check out our other videos here, subscribe, we're uploading new stuff every week. Uh, you can like and share the video if you did enjoy that. Uh, you can also check us out on Twitter, WG Tabletop on Facebook, Weapons Grade Channel on Facebook, Twitter, WG Tabletop on Twitter, I already said that, Instagram, that's what I meant, uh, that we just started Instagram, so that's WG Tabletop as well. Uh, board game links, the link will be in the description if you want to give us a heart. Uh, and thank you guys for watching as always, I will see you next time in the game room.